You were one of the advisors for the U.S. Chips and Science Act, and that's where we're going to start because I feel like that really tells the story of where we are in the world and this chip war. Um, do you think the relevant question in this month, April of 2025, is can the Chinese chip companies survive without the U relying on the U.S. and the ecosystem that we're already familiar with? Well, first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, relative to, to that question, I think there's no, no doubt that the Chinese uh, domestic semiconductor industry can and has already proven that it will survive without potentially access to some of what we in the West would have considered critical technology. When you think about companies like Huawei, who was just mentioned, or DeepSeek, or YMTC, which is one of the most advanced fabs in China, you can actually see that they have successfully been able to keep on the technology curve without access to certain technologies that we thought uh, would have potentially slowed down that, that growth of that industry. Mm -hmm. So I'd say yes, there's no question that the Chinese are at parity or very close to being at parity. And the idea for the CHIPS Act is really bringing all these uh, semi-related capacity to the United States. Would it make sense for these uh, global chip makers to bring production to the United States without the incentives provided in the CHIPS Act? Well, without the incentives and with still having access to the Chinese market, which isn't, which isn't the case, right. then the answer would be no, probably not you would not see that inward investment into, into the United States. The CHIPS Act is meant to attract further domestic uh, uh, investment, but it's also meant to bring onshore companies like TSMC and others to build the most leading edge fabs into the United States. Mm. It's also meant to foster the industry, the food chain that supports these companies like the capital equipment companies, like uh, the, uh, the critical materials providers, to have them onshore into the United States as well. Mm -hmm. uh, without those incentives, and they're, they're quite long range incentives that have to be in place, I'm not sure that we would see the U.S. necessarily come back and be fully competitive as a, as a chips manufacturer. I mean, the U.S. makes roughly 20% plus or minus of the, of the worldwide chips right now. That's down from, say, almost 40% uh, less than 15 years ago. So to attract that and to pull it back, we need to have incentives, but we also need to be able to be cost effective and be able to do this at scale. Yeah. That's the issue that the CHIPS Act is trying to, trying to solve. Exactly, and finding the right talent out, uh, out in the U.S. and uh, price uh, related to labor seems to be really the big problem that many are talking about there. Then do you think these tariffs being pushed for by the Trump administration would be yet another reason for not only for China but for many others around the world to think about self-sufficiency? Okay, sure, we might might have been thinking about putting down the, uh, some money for, to build out food chain as you describe it in the United States, but given what's going on with the United States, maybe we want to bring it onshore to our own country or closer to my region. I, I don't think there's, there's no doubt that that's what's happening. The tariff situation, the initial restrictions that were placed on China, as, as you mentioned earlier, they have all served to create a more nationalistic approach to technology. You can see programs, of course, in the U.S., we've already mentioned the CHIPS Act and others, but also you can see the same effect is occurring in, in Europe, and we've already seen China's uh, Chinese emergence as well. So the tariffs and the restrictions, it just leads to a fragmentation of the industry. It's going to become less efficient. Uh, it's going to cost the industry quite a bit of money, but also significant delays in the growth of the industry as well. It's an impediment, definitely. Yeah, Kevin Martin here, pleasure having you on the show. So listen, the way I think about it is, I mean, the, Chip Act, uh, the CHIPS Act, which President Trump seems intent on, on killing, and you're probably not feeling great about that, having uh, advised on it, right? That was sort of, uh, you know, a carrot, incentives, as you, as you uh, described it. The tariffs seem to be a stick 
which uh, the president is using to say, look, uh, you know, you, you, you could onshore and build capacity to make chips in the U.S., or you could stay offshore and attract tariffs. I'm not sure that's, that's sort of the, the right way to go about it. But uh, I want to get past that and uh, get you to talk to us about what are called the diffusion rules, which started under President Biden and is under review by the Trump administration right now. He needs to make a decision by the middle of next month, and this is regarding... Uh, ways and means to restrict access and exports of critical chip as well as AI technology, certainly to adversaries, including uh, China, uh, right? H how is President Trump likely to rule on this, do you think? And very specifically, do you think the big hole that these rules need to address is uh, higher up the uh, uh, food chain where chip making equipment is concerned? Because, I mean, China can make the chips. They can't. They don't quite have the chip making gear yet. But if we restrict access to that, that could slow them down. What do you think? Well, first of all, uh, there's nothing. Uh, I can't say anything uh, to predict what Mr. Trump is going to do from one day to the next. Uh, it's 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 everybody's uh, coin toss at this point. Um, the, the reality is that right now at the de de design side and at the device side, I think there's very close to parity that exists between China and the U.S., et cetera. What doesn't exist necessarily, as you just mentioned, is the capital equipment, which still is pretty much resonant in the United States and or in the Netherlands with ASML. Uh, and then you can look at the critical subsystems, the, 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 the parts that go into these pieces of capital equipment. That's in, uh, primarily in, uh, in Europe. So there is some already some diffusion that's already occurring uh, or has occurred over the last several decades. I, I, I don't see a situation where Mr. Trump carries through. Uh, well, it seems illogical to me that he would carry through with uh, these continued restrictions and tariffs. And you can already see that he's starting to back off from those, those policies literally almost every day. It's just not sustainable. 